Okay, so we're talking about conservative forces, and we're also going to talk about the curl with that. Uh, in addition to that, we will talk about limits and its varied uses. So, oh yeah, I was talking about webcam earlier, where webcam takes a lot of data, and I was deciding where to use webcam, which is a camera. Um, but I ultimately said no, not net, no. Um, another thing, let's just talk about limits for a second. If you have uh, three uh, point masses and you want to get the, you know, where is the center of mass, it's probably going to be here if it's equal mass. But how we define that is to summation which is basically a type of integral. Um, it's a type of integral, but it is like a inf inform, uh, it's, it's a, pr a precursor to the infinite integral. And it is not need, uh, uh, infinite integral is not really needed, but here's a definition of uh, CM with, uh, with, you know, the proper definition and the recur uh, and then the choppy. This is a choppy definition. This is a proper definition. Uh, the reason we like choppy definition is for these cases right here. You can definitely use a choppy uh, definition to easily figure this out while using a CM, a uh, more fine-tuned version where if you're trying to get the center of mass of a bar that has unequal dimensions and unequal weight, like this unequal thing. You, you will have to use this method over here. And that method is super hard and um, time consuming. And if you have two different densities, like this attachment is two different densities, you can actually turn that to a point mass and turn this into a point mass and then use a choppy method by saying your point masses and getting the whatever center of mass it actually is. Now, if I don't want to do all that, there's a experimental way, which is the way that most scientists would use. It's called getting a leverage over here and attaching a string. And if you have an object like this, you drill a hole on it and attach it to here. You drill, so imagine if you have a wonky shape and sometimes it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. All right, so if you have a string over here, if you have a string over here, we know that the center of mass must come over here. Now, we rotate it to another hole. And because of the force of gravity is always centered on the point mass, usually, when this goes like here, which I need to now make it more beautiful um, because that won't work for my case here. Um, when I refuse to deal, so, oh, I went, okay. I might do a webcam again, actually. It does, it makes it easier to show what I'm saying. So if I, if, if I, if I do it like this, um, if I do it like this, and then I guess I had to erase this whole thing, this original line, we can make a, new assumption over here and then okay now we have where the center of mass is that the intersection point is going to be the center of mass um as you can see just by looking at it you can't really determine it because i uh the gravity will determine it it could have been like something like this and then the center of mass is uh found a new area over here and uh, in truth, the secret is the density is, you know, probably uniform here. But if it's not uniform, this is a one simple way to do it. And you might be saying, you're, you're drilling a hole, but that hole is so minuscule, man, that it's not going to make a large difference. That's the concept that I want to get on there. Experimental data. Very easy way. Another way is to get a string and do this, make it uh, not wobble, and then flip it 90 degrees, and then make it not wobble, and then mark that place. That place is the center of mass. Like, that would work. Experimentally, that's mathematically, 
Well, <laughs> here they are. Uh, some of them are very horrible. Now, why mathematically is so powerful is if you're making an imaginary axis that can't be held onto. For example, a collision, and you try to get the center mass for X, Y, and Z reasons, or some kind of atomic structure, um, or you need a very precise model for a very microscopic area, or it is a theoretical, where you're looking at space and time and looking at big objects like planets. Anyway, if you, have, if you were say to this increases the mass somehow, you just throw a bunch of particles in here to make this more massive. How would you figure that out? Where intuitively, you know that the center of mass will move this way because of the equations. But mathematically, that's not how you're supposed to explain it. To explain it, you need to use limits. You have to say over here, lim, if n goes to infinity. Yes, because you're saying that increases, right? So to show that that increases to that level, what, what you would do is say lim, let's just say this is x and then this is position x and this is position uh, mass of m. Position x um, is a vertical because it's two dimensional. And then it's mass, you have to do mx plus mx plus m, a, a, m, but the mass is increasing, so plus nx. And, and then it's m plus m plus m plus n. And we know that if this is increasing, everything else is a constant, so you could get everything out except for what n appears. And you know, n is a defining infinity, so it's nx divided by n, which, def, uh, which is infinity by infinity, which means it cancel out, which means the x coordinate, the coordinate of x, is directing. So it shows that everything is directing to this point, and that's how you use limits. Another way, another instance where you might use limits is when you encounter a theoretical resistor, where you say that one resistor, there's a original resistor, and if you attach a resistor that's very small and attach a resistor that's very big, what do you do? Well, when you say reticia is uh, very small, you say it's zero. And when it's reticia uh, uh, large, you say it's infinity, pretty much. Next, you use the, what, what I tried to, and then the question asks you, if you attach it to RS, and if you attach it to RL in um, both, uh, well, so, I don't actually remember the, a question. I don't remember if it's parallel or if it's just a series that actually caused this effect. Um, but uh, you can search it out. But if if uh, you do it in series or you do it in parallel, one of them gives you this format and one gives you this format. And you take a limit of that as RS goes to zero and limit of that to RL goes to infinity. That should be RL. And then you can solve that this is nearly equal and this is uh, basically zero uh, because that's zero. And this over here equals uh, same, so R nearly equal. And over here is greater. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's many ways to use limits. Another thing to talk about is conservative forces. If you have a system that and only conservative forces acts upon it, um, if you go and follow it, if you go and follow it and it returns to the same point, the total work done is zero if it's a conservative force. And it's a mathematical statement that we'll talk more about probably by just trying to make an attempt on introducing it. So oh, here I'm trying to show more of a real world value of limits and uh, conservative forces because you're gonna have to use integral and some um, curl, uh, which is done by doing partial derivatives and then 
uh, d z by j g h. If that equals zero, we know that this is conservative because of how a curl partial derivative x partial derivative y, how they would react with the system. And i j k is basically a cross product of these two. It's the definition, but yeah, we will stop here. But um, that's what I want to 